Hello traders welcome back to another episode of the free smart money concepts course in this video we will delve into the premium and discount concepts exploring their application in trading and how they can enhance decision making we will also talk about the common mistakes that traders make and finally we will discuss pdras and the hierarchy of different reference points within the pdra understanding these concepts can help traders refine their entry and exit points thereby maximizing the potential for profitable trades so watch this video till the end to get a proper grip of the entire concept if these series of videos are helping you to learn and improve please make sure to like this video to show you valuable support and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also make sure to enable the bell notification to get the latest updates so without wasting any time let's get started premium and discount are simple concepts that apply to buying and selling things this includes buying and selling instruments in the stock market or the forex market premium means expensive or markup and discount means cheap or markdown this is a basic trading principle that can be used in any market from consumer goods to securities traded through exchanges or even forex So when you buy something at a premium it means you are paying more than its fair value on the other hand buying something at a discount means you are getting it at a lower price than the actual value these simple concepts can be applied to various products and assets that are traded in the market such as stocks currency pairs or even commodities if you look at this picture you will see that markups and discounts can be applied to anything that can be sold on the open market even if it's a pack of banana chips the most optimal demand for a pack of chips will be 200 rupees but as the price gets higher the demand reduces and vice versa the lower the price the higher the demand this is simply the law of supply and demand you can learn more about it in my basics of stock market video now this is quite logical because if a one stop supermarket chain like dmart as a promotion for discounts on their different products then you will see a lot of people flocking to buy these products like bees on honey now when it comes to trading premiums and discounts can be marked on a candlestick chart to determine the premium and discount levels within a specific range or price action and you must all understand that a major player will never sell at cheap prices and they will never buy at higher prices premium and discount zones are places where majority of their sales and purchases takes place respectively when marking premium and discount zones on a candlestick chart you have the choice to apply this marking to any part of the price or range therefore even despite the strategy you have chosen you should strive to buy in the discount zone that is when the asset is trading at a discount and you should look to sell in the premium zone that is after the asset marks up or becomes expensive think of it this way when you want to buy something from amazon or flipkart you will look for the best discount that you can get so that you can buy it at a price lower than the actual going price in the market and when you want to sell the same product after some months in olx you will definitely look to get the highest price possible that is you want to sell it at a premium or at an expensive price than the actual going price in the market Now let's learn how to draw premium and discount zones. For this, you will require three things: a swing high, a swing low, and a Fibonacci retracement tool. If you have watched my video on market structure mapping, you will definitely have a good idea on how to spot swing highs and swing lows in a chart. Here, the price is rallying higher. This is an impulse move towards the upside. The swing low is the lowest point in this entire impulse swing move. We will also have to include the wicks if any. On the contrary, swing high is the highest point within the entire impulse swing move including the wicks. Now once the swing high and swing low are identified, we can bring up the Fibonacci retracement tool from the left side toolbar section. Then select the swing low point that we have identified and drag the cursor and select the swing high point. This will automatically plot all the Fibonacci retracement levels. We don't require all these default levels, so we can select the Fibonacci settings 
and then uncheck all the levels other than 0%, 50% and 100% levels. Then you can click on OK. Now what we have are three levels. One at the swing low, one at the swing high and another at the midpoint between the high and the low. Now the area below the 50% Fibonacci level is considered as the discount zone and the region above the 50% Fibonacci level is considered as the premium zone. The 50% level is known as equilibrium or mean threshold which is nothing but the fair valuation of the asset at that particular instance. This is the point where bearish premium arrays and bullish discount arrays meet. It represents a state of balance in the market where supply and demand are equal and the forces of buying and selling are evenly matched. Since the price is rallying upwards, our bias will be bullish. That is, we want to trade with the trend. So we will look for buying opportunities. But as I have stated earlier, we should always look to buy at the discount valuations or cheaper prices. So where will you get the cheapest price? Obviously, you should look to buy from the discount zone when the price makes a retracement or correction in order to get a markdown below the mean threshold. This doesn't mean you should take a long position anywhere in the discount zone. You should take buy positions only from one or more of those prices of interest or SMC reference points. This gives us additional confirmations for our trades. We will talk about these reference points and their relevance when we take up the PDRA concept. Now look at the next scenario. In this case, the price has declined lower. This is an impulse move towards the downside. So the first step is to spot the swing high and swing low of this impulse move. Then use Fibonacci retracement tool to connect the swing high and the swing low. This will plot the retracement levels automatically. Now go to the settings and uncheck all those levels that we don't require. Just keep the 0%, 50% and 100% levels. So there is a level at the swing low, one at the swing high and the last one is at the middle between swing high and swing low which is nothing but the mean threshold or equilibrium. And above the mean threshold is the premium zone and below equilibrium is the discount zone. Since the price is declining lower, our bias will be to sell. That is, we will look for short trading setups when price makes a retracement or correction towards the upside. And when we are looking to sell, we will obviously look to sell at expensive valuations or at higher prices. This means we should short above the mean threshold or in the premium zone. This is where prices are marked up above the fair value or equilibrium. Now, you can't just sell at random prices within the premium zone. It doesn't work like that. You need to sell at any of the prices of interest or the SMC reference points, which is already existing inside the premium zone for the best possible results. This will provide a high probability setup for us to work with. Now, moving on, let us look at some issues with this concept. And we will also look at some of the common mistakes that traders make when using premium and discount zones. The truth is that most traders either rely too heavily on this tool to make informed trading decisions or they use it in such market conditions in which it does not make any sense to use this tool. When using Fibonacci, you don't need to be FIB dependent on rely on the fact that when price drops into the discount zone, it should immediately begin to rise. And when the price rises to the premium zone, it should immediately stop and begin the downward movement. Keep in mind that price does not owe you anything and the market does not move according to your whims and fancies. It is true that price takes into account premium and discount zones, but the higher the time frame, the stronger is the possibility of it working out for us. The most common problem with premium and discount zones is that on lower time frames that are below 15 minutes, this tool becomes less effective if the price is not in its full range. It is also worth remembering that price tends to change direction even if there are these important zones on the way. So there is no real guarantee of a price reversal from these zones. While we believe that premium and discount are a great entry point tool, over reliance on it can cause you to incur losses and also miss out on quality trade setups just because they are not premium or discount. So without conducting an in-depth analysis of prices, 
using concepts like market structure, supply demand zones, liquidity, etc., which help to get the idea of the market direction, it is not even worth choosing a Fibonacci tool to plot premium and discount zones. The other common mistake that traders fall into is using premium and discount zones in those markets or assets that are either extremely volatile or those which are trending strongly in one direction. A simple example is to choose a stock that tends to move in one direction over the long term but with a very high volatility. The price may fluctuate parabolically within an upward trend and it will not even think about falling into the discount zone. So the price may not always follow the expected pattern when it is in the premium or discount zone, especially in short to medium term trends. Another mistake committed by the less experienced traders is that they go chasing premium and discount zones everywhere in the charts and they will eventually end up on the wrong side of the trend. So do not chase premium and discount zones and do not go against the trend. And lastly, don't trade premium and discount zones within a consolidation zone. So it is important to note that there is no real magic in premium and discount Fibonacci tool. What matters most is the narrative, the story that the market is telling. Only with a clear understanding of the narrative can you use this zone as a framework for trading. This is where the significance of PD arrays come into play. PD arrays stands for premium and discount arrays. This is a central concept in SMC. An array is nothing but a specific arrangement of things. Now premium discount array is crucial for understanding how the market has moved and how it might move in the future. It is like a detailed map of the market activity showing traders where the price has been and suggesting where it might go. This array is particularly useful for identifying key levels of support and resistance as well as potential entry and exit points for trades. PD arrays focuses on the analysis of price levels in terms of their relative value compared to the market's perceived fair value. In a PD array, price points are categorized as either premium or discount. Premium prices are those considered higher than the market's perceived fair value indicating a potential overvaluation while discount prices are seen as lower suggesting an undervaluation. You already know how to plot these premium and discount zones and as a matter of fact you also know that this method of categorization allows traders to gain insight into the potential market turning points by identifying where the market might switch from a state of overvaluation to undervaluation and vice versa. But PD arrays are more than just premium and discount zones. This is a multifaceted analysis that helps traders to not only see what the market is doing, but also understand why it is doing so, thereby enabling more informed and strategic trading decisions. PD arrays also take into consideration some array items or reference points. Specifically, there are seven array items or institutional reference points that we need to consider in a PD array. In ICT methodology, these reference points includes old highs and old lows, order blocks, rejection blocks, mitigation blocks, breaker blocks, fair value gaps, and liquidity voids. Old highs and old lows refers to the swing highs and swing lows that can act as potential resistances or support levels for prices respectively. Due to this reason, there will be liquidity in the form of retailer orders available beneath these levels. So old highs and old lows are potential areas where the smart money can manipulate prices to absorb the liquidity and then reverse the market direction. Other than this, I have given you detailed explanation on each and every single topic. You can watch and revise them by going to the SMC playlist. Now there is a particular order or hierarchy or relevance by which each of these array items are organized within a PD array. But before I tell you the hierarchy of array items, I want you to remember that you need to conduct your analysis on your higher time frame charts no matter what trading style you follow. It could be swing, intraday, positional, etc. But this primary analysis should be done on your preferred higher time frame. This will definitely improve the quality of the trade signals. Once you receive a good setup, you can always move down to your lower time frame charts to optimize your trade entries. 
Now, let us look at the order of relevance of discount RA items. We will only consider the discount zone when our trading bias is bullish. So for remembering this with ease, we can also call it a bullish discount array. Here, I have listed the bullish discount array items in the order of their relevance or hierarchy. So the most relevant institutional reference point is the old low, followed by a bullish rejection block, then a bullish order block, a bullish fair value gap after this, followed by a bullish liquidity void, a bullish breaker block thereafter, and the least relevant item is the bullish mitigation block. The hierarchy or relevance of fair value gaps and liquidity voids can be interchanged. Now, even though the relevance of these array items are in this particular order, we should start looking for these reference points in the opposite order. That is, we need to start searching for a bullish mitigation block first, followed by a bullish breaker block and so on. There is a simple explanation as to why the relevance is in this order, but when looking for opportunities, we should go in the opposite order of the hierarchy. Look at this figure. I have marked some of the seven reference points within a discount zone. Now, what do you notice? We can see that the old low is the lowest of all RA items located at the end of the discount zone. The next item is the bullish rejection block followed by a bullish order block, a liquidity void and a few fair value gaps within it. You can notice that one of the fair value gaps is closer to the equilibrium zone. It is clear that the reference points are arranged based on how cheap the price can become when compared to the mean threshold. So higher the relevance of an array item, the cheaper the price is available in the discount zone, which increases a trader's profitability and improves his chances of success. But you might already be aware of the fact that price will not pull back all the way down to absorb the liquidity. Price needs liquidity to move. It doesn't matter from where it gets it. This means the probability of price returning back to sweep the old low or the rejection block in a discount zone is much lower. Prices might reverse from an order block or a fair value gap. This is why we should look for the least relevant array items first, which is situated closer to the mean threshold and then only look for other reference points, which are usually formed deep within the discount zone. Another point to note is that not all these reference points will get formed within a discount zone. There might be occasions where you might get only a bullish order block and a bullish fair value gap. But there might be other situations where you might encounter a majority of these reference zones. So the idea is not to force yourself into finding these reference zones. If it is there, it will be visible to you. If it is not there, don't go searching for a ghost that does not exist. Now. Once price trades below equilibrium, and if the overall narrative is bullish, it sets up buy conditions. You can look for long trading setups from these reference areas within the discount zone as it increases the probability of a successful trade. These reference areas are where buyers might step in to drive prices up from these discounted levels. These setups are identified when the price returns to the discounted conditions allowing you to buy at favorable prices. Moving on, let us look at the order of relevance of array items in a premium zone. It is also called a bearish premium array because our bias is to go short in the market. Here, I have listed down the array items based on their hierarchy in a premium zone. So the most relevant institutional point on the sell side is the old high followed by a bearish rejection block after which comes a bearish order block, a bearish fair value gap thereafter, followed by a bearish liquidity void, and then a bearish breaker block, and the last reference point is the bearish mitigation block. Here also, the relevance of liquidity voids and fair value gaps can be interchanged. Now, just like the previous case, we should start looking for the lowest array items in terms of priority, because the price will not always retrace all the way back to grab the liquidity. It can sweep the liquidity available anywhere in the bearish premium array and then reverse lower. So start looking for the mitigation blocks first, followed by the bearish breaker blocks, the liquidity voids and so on. Also, 
not all these array items get formed within the premium sort. So don't just assume things. Follow what you have learned and apply it. If it is not there, it is not there. As simple as that. The same concepts apply to short setups as well. When the market takes liquidity, forms a swing low and trades above the equilibrium region, you can wait for institutional reference points like bearish fair value gaps, bearish order blocks, etc. These reference zones are where sellers might dominate, pushing the prices down from these premium levels. If the overall bias is bearish, you can take a short trade entry, which will present you with a high probability trade setup. So these are all the important things that you need to know about premium and discounts. It is important to keep in mind that premium and discount concepts should be used as a part of a comprehensive trading strategy. Traders should consider other factors such as market structure, supply and demand zones and liquidity before making trading decisions. These concepts provide additional insights and can enhance decision making, but they should not be relied upon as the sole basis for entering or exiting trades. Keep learning, backtest what you have learned on multiple charts and on multiple time frames, and take paper trades to strengthen your grasp on the subject. So this is the penultimate episode in this first season of Smart Money Concepts course. The next episode will be a video on some useful SMC indicator. Now, the second season will deal with the different SMC strategies and risk management techniques. It will take a few months to prepare the entire course because it's a lot of work to research and make high quality conceptual videos. So make sure you stay with us and support our efforts. And if you have come this far, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have found this video informative. If it was useful, please make sure to like and share this video with your friends and fellow traders. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay updated on our latest videos. We value your feedback and suggestions, so please leave your comments below and let us know what topics you would like us to cover in our future videos. I appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Till then, bye.